This lesson is about the seven harmonic minor modes. The modes are great jazz scales and they have a really nice exotic flavor. Now try to listen to this little jazz solo. Right now we improvise over the Ionian sharp 5 scale. One of the seven harmonic minor modes. In this lesson we'll learn them all. And I'll introduce a very smart cardboard tool to look up the seven modes in any key. Finally, I'll show you some very easy and practical techniques on how to improvise when using the modes. So, in the start we do some revealing theory and by the end we play music. My name is Oliver Prey, by the way, and this is a new jazz lesson. Okay, here we have the harmonic minor scale in C. Look, it's almost like a natural minor scale. We just sharpen the seventh step. So, now we have this exotic augmented second interval. The scale is named harmonic minor because we can play this harmonic progression dominant 7 to tonic without leaving the scale. We can also refer to this scale as Aeolian sharp 7. The Aeolian scale is equal to uh, the natural minor scale. And if we sharpen the 7th step, well, then we got the, the Aeolian sharp 7 scale, right? This scale pattern comes in 7 variants, or 7 degrees, because we can make any of the 7 single notes inside the harmonic minor scale to a new key note. So, right now C is the key note. But what if, for example, the next note in the scale is the key note, the D note? Then we got a completely different sound, a different scale. It's the same keys as before, but we have changed the key note, right? This scale is called Locrian Sharp 6. And why this name? Well, let's find out. So let's look into the characteristics of this scale. It's a minor scale, because we have the minor third step, uh, the minor third step compared to the key note D, right? So let's start by playing the D natural minor scale. So what differs when we compare this well-known natural minor scale with uh, the Locrian sharp six scale? Well, firstly we have a minor second step instead of the major second step. This minor scale with a lowered second step is referred to as the Phrygian scale. Secondly, we also have to diminish the fifth. And we got the Locrian scale. If you don't know these scales, don't worry. You don't have to know all the theory. 
Later on in this lesson, I'll give you some easy tools to look up the scales and some practical ideas on how to improvise over the scales. So that will be much easier. For now, just watch and listen how we gradually change the sound of a scale by flattening and sharpening the steps. Okay, so here we have the Loquian scale. So, what to do now? Well, we just need to sharpen the sixth step, and we got our scale. Locrian sharp six. It's always a good thing to compare the scale in hand with the nearby scales. In that way, we learn a great deal about the characteristics and the sound of our scales. So, we went from the natural minor scale And then we added the Phrygian quality. And then we added the Locrian quality. And then we made the scale unique and exotic by raising the sixth step. Locrian sharp six. So try to play D in the bass. I just love to play around and explore a specific scale. This is truly a wonderful, exotic scale, right? Try to sing along. In this way, you will also exercise your ear. So, when to use the Locrian sharp 6 scale? Well, if we, if we build up the tonic chord from the keynote D, we got this D minor flat 5 7 chord. So, if we stumble upon a minor 7 flat 5 chord, we might just use the Locrian sharp 6 as our improvisation material. Now listen, the Locrian sharp 6 really makes the minor 7 flat 5 chord interesting and exotic, right? So far we have learned two scales, the C harmonic minor and the D Locrian sharp 6, right? We use the same keys, but with different starting points, different key notes. So the scales have completely different qualities. Now. If we move the starting point to the next step, the next degree, uh, the E flat note, we have a brand new scale in our hand. It was this scale I used in the start of the uh, video when improvising together with uh, the drum and bass backing track. This scale is almost like the well-known major scale. Here we got the E flat major scale, also named E flat Ionian. Can you see what we just need to do? We just need to augment the fifth step, and we got our scale the major sharp 5 or Ionian sharp 5 scale. So it's not a traditional major scale anymore like this. 
Now it's like this. By raising the fifth step, we have added something exotic to the major scale, right? The augmented second interval. Play the E flat note in the bass and try this out. The Ionian sharp 5 scale is just so nice and exotic, I think. Maybe we should name it Exotic Major. So, on what type of chord can we play this scale? Well, let's build up the Ionian sharp 5 tonic chord from the E flat root. So here we got the major 7 sharp 5 chord. A really nice jazz chord. And by using our Ionian sharp 5 scale as our improvisation material, Material. We really add a nice exotic sound to the chord, I think. So, if we stumble upon a major 7 sharp 5 chord, we may just consider to use this Ionian sharp 5. Listen to all these nice, super clashing dissonances that some call avoid notes. I just love them. And please don't avoid these notes. Embrace them. Then we can hear the true quality of the Ionian sharp 5 scale. Okay, let's shortly summarize. Here we have our C harmonic minor scale, or Aeolian sharp 7. And here we have the D Locrian sharp 6, right? Same keys, but different keynote and starting point. And with E flat as keynote, we got the Ionian sharp 5 scale. Next scale. I guess you already know what we are going to do, yes? Now we move up the scale another step, and F is our new keynote. Same keys as always, but different starting point. So what do we have here? Well. This is a kind of minor scale, because we have the minor third interval compared to the keynote F, right? So let's compare this scale with the F natural minor scale. Well, then we must sharpen the sixth step, and we got this sound. The Dorian scale, actually. A very much you scale when improvising jazz. But we are not done yet. We must also augment the fourth step, right? And we got this exotic Dorian sharp 4 scale. Let's play F in the bass and try this out. So, this scale is almost like the Dorian scale. We have just augmented the fourth step. So, we have just changed Dorian into something rather unique and special. Listen. Exciting. 
Party Dorian <laughs> with its augmented second incident. So, on what chord can we play the Dorian sharp for? Well, if we use the scale to build up a chord from the root, we got this F minor 7 chord. And listen what happens when we add the scale to this chord. Mm, a very exotic fourth step that is added to the minor 7 chord, right? Remember to play around and explore each scale. In this way you will be familiar with the scales. And it's really fun work. Again, embrace the dissonances. If you are a music composer, you can surely pick up many ideas by playing around with these harmonic minor modes. Okay, next scale. Now the G note is the starting point. So, what do we have here? Well, it's a major scale, right? But anyway, the scale looks more like the G natural minor scale with its flat 6th and 7th step. If we lower the 2nd step, we got the G Phrygian scale. And if we then raise the third step, we got the Phrygian sharp three scale. Let's play G in the bass. This is a scale that in many ways is dark and minor-like. surprises with its major third step. I really like this conflicting contrary property of the scale. Minor quality, major quality. Some refer to this scale as a Phrygian major because of the major flavor that has been added uh, the Phrygian scale. So, on what type of chord can we use this scale? Let's build up the Phrygian major chord from the G note. And we got the G7 chord. So, if we want to play a solo or a 7 chord, we just might spice up the chord by using the Phrygian major scale. By the way, this scale is also referred to as a Phrygian dominant scale, because the scale has a dominant quality with its major third step and the minor third uh, the minor seventh step sorry again nice dissonances we can resolve them if it's all too much suspension resolve Ok, 
Okay, let's summarize. Here we have our C harmonic minor scale. Aeolian sharp 7. And when D is the keynote, we have the D Locrian sharp 6. And then the E flat Ionian sharp 5. F Dorian sharp 4. And with the G as keynote, we got the Phrygian major scale. Phrygian sharp 3. We use the same keys, but we have different keynotes, different starting points. So all these scales are just different degrees of each other. Let's move on. If A flat is the keynote, we got this thrilling scale. Let's compare this scale with the well-known major scale. So we need to augment the fourth step. And we got the A-flat Lydian scale. This scale has a very bright sound, right? So our scale is almost like the Lydian scale. We just need to augment the second step and we got the Lydian sharp 2 scale. Let's make the Lydian sharp 2 chord here, the major 7 chord. And let's put the Lydian sharp 2 on top to make things spicy and exotic. Again, we have a lot of sharp dissonances that really mess everything up, I think. And isn't that just wonderful? <laughs> For example, we have this augmented second step. It makes a nice clash against the major third note in the A flat major 7 chord. The augmented second step could also be enharmonic interpreted as a minor third step. So with that interpretation, the scale contains both the minor and the major quality. Wow, right? What a nice clash. Very soon, I will show you a great tool so you can easily look up any of the seven harmonic minor modes in all 12 keys. And after that, I will give you some practical tricks on how to improvise a solo when using these scales. But before that, we just need to explore one last scale. So, let's move the keynote to the B note. And we got this scale called Altered Dominant Double Flat 7 because it's just like the altered dominant scale, but with a minor seven step that is flattened once more. An altered, altered scale. If this makes no sense, never mind, because I have a much simpler and provoking method to approach this scale. We go down a semitone and make the B flat major scale. Then we just lower the 7th step and we got the B-flat Mixolydian scale. 
now we are gonna do something very naughty. Can you figure out what that is? We simply augment the first step. And here we have our scale. I like to refer to this scale as Mixolydian sharp 1. Because this is how I hear the scale. Just like a Mixolydian. But with an augmented first step. Now, this approach may seem just a little provoking for those who are stuck in music traditions. <laughs> because we alter the keynote itself. And you may think this is a wrong approach. You can't do that. And that's totally okay with me. But try to hear me out on this issue. By naming the scale Mixolydian Sharp 1, we got a beautiful and simple way to explain the scale. No double flats and altered scales that are altered even more. We just play the Mixolydian. And we augment the first step. And furthermore, we now have a nice ordered list of scales, as you can see above the keyboard. All the harmonic minor modes are now compared with their relative church modes. Look, the church modes are listed in correct order. And their sharpened steps are also listed in a perfect numerical order. We now get the idea. The idea that the seven harmonic minor modes are actually closely related to the seven church modes. We just sharpen a single step in each church mode and we got an exotic variation based on a harmonic minor degree. But anyway, if you don't like the name Mixolydian Sharp 1, then just use the name Alder Dominant Double Flat 7, because this name is the common used name. Nobody uses the name Mixo Sharp 1, and if you use that name in public, people will probably just think you are a crazy jerk that doesn't know anything about music theory. <laughs> okay. On what chord can we use this scale? Well, the tonic chord of this scale is the, the diminished 7 chord. So, if you stumble upon a diminished 7 chord, you may use the mixo sharp 1. Soon, I will show you a very easy way to look up all the harmonic minor modes. And then I will show you some practical tips to improvise over the notes. Now, before moving on, let's shortly summarize. Here we have our C harmonic minor scale, also called Aeolian sharp 7. This scale is like the natural minor scale but with a raised 7th step. If the next note in the scale is the keynote, we have the D Locrian sharp 6 scale. And then we have the E flat, the E flat Ionian sharp 5, F Dorian sharp 4, G Phrygian sharp 3, a flat Lydian sharp 2 and finally the B Mixolydian sharp 1. All these seven exotic scales are closely related and linked to the seven church modes as we can see on the beautiful ordered list above the keyboard. Now we will move on and do things a lot easier. 
I'll show you a very smart tool to look up all the seven harmonic minor modes in any key. So here we got the magic tool. I made this out of a piece of cardboard. We got two discs that are sewed together with the two shirt buttons. In that way the two discs can rotate upon each other. In the description below I have pasted a link to a PDF document with the two discs. Just print the PDF, cut out the discs and connect them so they can spin upon each other. Now let's magnify and place this tool above the keyboard. On the lower disc we have all the common names of the harmonic minor modes. Harmonic minor, Locrian sharp 6, Ionian sharp 5, Dorian sharp 4, Phrygian major, Lydian sharp 2, and also a dominant double flat 7. And yes, I use the common names. I just don't dare otherwise. On the upper disc we got all 12 keys, 7 white keys, and 2 plus 3 black keys. Ok, here comes the very smart thing. Now imagine that you want to locate, for example, the C harmonic minor scale. What do we do? Well, we just locate the harmonic minor scale on the lower disc. And then we turn the upper disc so the C note and the harmonic minor scale points together. And now the C harmonic minor scale is pointed out by all the small arrows at the other modes. So the C harmonic minor scale contains the keys C, D, E flat. F, G, A flat, and B. One more example. Now we want to play the C Phrygian major scale. So we locate Phrygian major on the lower disc. And then we point the C note to that scale. Oh, it's already there. And we got all the keys inside the C Phrygian major scale. C, D flat, E, F, G, A flat, and B flat. This is easy and simple, right? On the lower circle, I have also written the chords that fit each scale. So, when, for example, we stumble upon a 7 chord, well, we can play the Phrygian major scale. Now, finally, Let's play music. How can we make thrilling improvisation over the harmonic minor modes? I will give you some practical tips. Let's return to the C harmonic minor scale. When improvising over this scale, we can of course just play the scale stepwise step up and down like this. But I think that's a little boring. What I often like to do is to break up the scale in patterns. So let's look for patterns inside the scale. What about looking for the major triad? So can you help me? How many major triads can we locate inside the harmonic minor mode? And if any, where are they located? Well, we actually got two major triads hidden inside our scale. Look, the A flat triad and the G triad. And they both sound really cool, don't you think? Notice I 
often like to play the triads in this inversion, with the third on the top. And then I occasionally also use my pinky to hit the fifth of the triad. So I have this nice triad hand grip spanning over an octave. smart thing is that all seven harmonic minor modes always contain two triads. And they are always placed a half step from each other, like this. That's because each mode has the same interval pattern. The modes just have different starting points, right? So we'll always be able to locate two triads right next to each other, no matter what harmonic minor mode we play. So if I want to play, for example, the E flat Ionian sharp 5 scale, we just move the starting point to the E flat note. And we still have the two triads right here. And if we want to play the Ionian sharp 5 in another key, for example in F, then we can locate our triads here, the B flat and A major triad. So if we want to improvise over any of the harmonic minor modes, we can always look for the two triads right next to each other. But how to locate and find the two triads? Well, just look for the augmented second interval inside the scale. And we have the triads right below, here and here. Okay? Another example, a Phrygian major scale in C. So we must look for the augmented second interval, right? And just below we have the two triads, the D flat triad the C triad. So just look for the augmented second interval. Every harmonic minor mode got one. And then you know where to place the two triads. Now let's turn on the drum and bass backing track and try this out. In this track, the bass plays uh, the E flat Ionian sharp 5 scale. So let's turn the lower disc to Ionian sharp 5, and then the upper disc to the E flat note. So here we got our improvisation material. Now listen how boring it can sound when you just play the scale up and down like this. And now listen how we can make the improvisation more interesting by using the triad pattern. So mix in this little stepwise three finger grip to make some variation. And look, the three finger grip can also be placed in here. So now I play around with the triad grip here and here. 
and the, th and the, the stepwise three finger grip here and here. This is a fun way to play the scale. method, we break up the scale and make new structures and patterns. So a good thing is to look for patterns that we can use and reuse when playing scale. By the way, I will upload an mp3 file with the backing track only. So, you can play along and rehearse the scale and the grips. I will paste a link in the description below. And if you feel for it, you are so much welcome to make a donation. Donations help me to cut down the hours at my regular job. In return, I can make music lessons here on the new jazz channel. And Thank you so much to all of you who made donations. I'm just so pleased and thankful. And also a big thanks to everybody else. You all support me somehow. Some gives me a like, some writes a nice message, and some just follow the new jazz channel. You all help me to make this real to me. So a big thanks to everybody. By the way, I've made two other circular tools similar to the tool presented in this lesson. One tool to look up all the church modes, and one tool to look up the melodic minor modes. I will paste some relevant links below. Well, that's it from now. See you very soon. Warm regards from Oliver.